I ran out of uh, Let the Clock Get Away From Me on the last one. That was Introductory Video, 1302 Introductory Video Part 1. This is 1302 Introductory Video Part 2. So it takes me both on to finish up. I have trouble cramming this into the time I have in a full-length class session of face-to-face. So you're getting the light version. Okay. Quizzes, exams, whatever it is, except outside class assignments. They're on a little bit different schedule. Uh, you'll have four days. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday to minute four, midnight, Thursday night to get them done. So that should work for you. Um, what I wanted to say was, in this or anything else, if you wait till the last minute, if you wait till the last minute, you're placing a bet that you could lose. You're betting that the power won't go off. You're betting that the internet won't get gommed up. You're betting that your computer won't won't uh, something go wrong with it or the dog eat it or something like that. So it's best to, to keep yourself covered and keep on the safe side. And there's something I've managed to avoid or miss. This is going to be like after the Americans with Disabilities Act came out, it just legislated goals but not means. There are banks that were putting Braille keypads on their drive through ATMs. <laughs> Think about it. This is going to be kind of like that. But if you are hearing impaired and you need captions or subtitles on these videos, please email me as quick as you can so that I can start working on that. So uh, if nobody asks for that, then, then I'm still going to have to do it, but I'm not going to be under such like time pressure. Okay. All right. Now the uh, assignments themselves, starting with the chapter quizzes. You are assigned to read chapters 18 through 32 of the regular textbook. When I speak of the regular textbook, I'm speaking of U.S. and narrative history that you buy at the bookstore. Okay? Over each chapter, there will be a 10-question multiple-choice quiz. In the past, I've given 11-question quizzes, and the top grade would be 110. And that was a lot of trouble. Okay? That wasn't anywhere near worth, worth my time to make that happen. So it's going to be a 10 question quiz. Your answer will be the, your, your grade will be the number of correct answers times 10. If you don't get any answers right at all, then I'll throw you probably 10 points just to show that you did take the quiz. Once you start one, and you don't have to go searching for one, you would open the, the module for next week when next week gets here. You can say chapter 18 quiz, click on that, boom, you're in the quiz. Once that starts, you got 10 minutes. When 10 minutes are up, you're done. So that's how that will work. To help you prepare for it, under study materials, there's a set of study questions for each chapter, and each set of study questions is the chapter average, I mean the chapter outline in question form. I recommend you take it one section at a time. There's a good bit more information about this, how I recommend using them in the general course information document that I mentioned at the beginning. Okay, there will be three unit exams, also known as major exams. Each will be two parts. Uh, each will have two essay questions of which you will answer your choice of one. Answer one of the two. <coughs> if you answer both of them, I'll just grade one of them. Okay, I'm not usually a very happy camper when I'm grading these things anyway. So pick your best shot and take it. Now the this is online. The software will randomize which questions you get out of a bank of four or five, occasionally six questions. So I don't know which two you're going to see. If they're parallel ones, I'll probably set up two groups and each one will offer you one. <coughs> It'll be transparent to you. Don't worry about it. Just answer one essay question. Uh, the study materials uh, module has got major exam essay prep documents. So Exam 1, essay prep. Exam 2, essay prep. That will direct you to topics in the supplements. These are from the supplements, not the regular textbook, that you need to bone up on and know a lot about uh, in order to answer essay questions successfully. Uh, the, the best essay, essay answers are those that would reliably inform someone who read them. The other half of the major exam will be a 25-question multiple choice section based on the supplements. Each one of these will have a 
a, a multiple choice section worksheet that you can access on Canvas, and they are drawn from the supplements. I apply a formula. I apply a formula to your uh, um, multiple choice raw score to get your actual point award. And you might happen to notice when you start a, a unit exam, it's going to say not for grade. That's because your preliminary raw score is not going to be your grade because I still have to grade the uh, the essay and apply the formula to the multiple choice. Okay. There will be a writing project for one of a better name. This, this is a state requirement. It has to be the same all across this college. And I will culminate in writing a research paper. Only for this purpose, unlike maybe an English class, you don't have to do the research. You will be provided with a list of links to about 10 historical documents about the, the assigned topic. I don't even know right now for sure what it is. I think we're recycling one from a past semester. Um, and though the, so the research is there. You'll be writing your paper from that. Now this is divided into two components. The first one has three things. And the first one, which I screwed up but last last time or next to last, is the works cited list, or I prefer the older term bibliography. You're going to take all 10 of those sources that, that are on the list and put them into a document, all 10 of them, not just the ones you use on the paper. That's the first thing you will turn in. It's going to have to be in correct format. MLA is preferred, I believe, with um, with a correct, proper heading and all of that. And uh, so that'll be great. That'll be turned in via turnitin.com. As the day approaches, I'll be telling you more about that. Second will be a quiz where you'll be determining whether certain sources, you there's a link of the source, look at the source, and then answer whether it is primary, secondary, or tertiary. Historical documents fall into any of those three categories. A document written by a participant or an eyewitness is primary. If it is based on primary sources, it's secondary. If it's further removed from than that, like an encyclopedia article or a textbook, then it's a tertiary source. I've always thought the line between secondary and tertiary is really pretty blurry. But they changed this up last fall. I don't remember exactly where it landed, but I liked what they did with it. So that's the second thing. Thirdly, as it comes closer to time for the paper to be turned in, thesis statement and outline assignment. It's a document, proper heading, proper form. A thesis statement is a single sentence, one sentence, summarizing the point you hope to prove in your paper. And think about it and make sure it's uh, something that, that it's a point you hope to prove. And then you would have an outline of the paper. And I'm always dismayed at how many of my students apparently have not the ghost of a clue what an outline is supposed to look like. And it makes me wonder what what English teachers are getting to pay to do. Radicalize you? Some of them probably so. Who knows? Okay, then finally, um, average in by itself is the, the, the paper itself. Four to six pages long, some stylistic requirements, all of that. Appended to it will be a, a work cited list including just the ones that you used in the paper. Okay, that leaves the final exam. Uh, the final exam is comprehensive. It's over the entire course. It consists of 100 four-option multiple-choice questions divided equally among the units. And I used to say when it was on paper, they were in approximate chronological order. Can't say that anymore because their computer randomizes everything from one student to the next. Uh, now, all the other multiple-choice questions I'll throw at you will be three options. Final exam, four options. I do apply a formula to your raw score, which probably looks pretty ugly, uh, but I apply a formula to get your actual point award. All you need to know about that is you're really happy about it. How, how happy would, would uh, vary. Now, the next thing is not an assignment. Do the words extra credit make your interest perk up? 
I have an extra credit thing, and it has to do, there's a possible confusion factor I'll try to eliminate. The, the supplements, the, um, the, the book written by me, at the end of each chapter, there's going to be a multiple, there's going to be a fill in the blank worksheet headed study items. If I refer to bonus worksheets, that's also what I'm talking about. Same thing. So, uh, chapter 18 has got um, one of these at the end. They vary in length, by the way. Some are fairly short, some are pretty long. But let's say you print that out. And the reason it's not quite available yet is they're trying to get those back down to two pages each where I had them. And uh, it's not an assignment. It's optional. Fill in the answers, put your name on there, and preferably which section you're in. Um, and um, either scan it or shoot a picture of it with your smartphone. Try for the best. You know, I'm going to grade this stupid thing and not use up all my toner, my printer, print it out. Email them to me, and I'll try to have a kind of a schedule on that. I'll grade them, and for each correct answer on, let's say, the, uh, the bonus worksheet over... Uh, Defeat of the Plains Indians, the Settlement of the Interior West, that's chapter 18. However many answers you get right, I will add that many points to your chapter 18 quiz grade. Now, doing the bonus worksheet is not necessarily going to prepare you for the chapter 18 quiz. It's going to help prepare you for the first exam. That's the confusion factor. Okay. Okay, the hand, the, it's called a handout, I can't have anything out anymore. That's going to be dealt with in the, in the general course information document. Okay. All study materials, all that sort of stuff. You can always access your grades on Canvas. It will probably be the third week before uh, that will really be up and going. It usually is. Could be longer than that last fall because I have so much to do. Drops and withdrawals. Okay, from time to time people become discouraged. Their dad gets a new job in Phoenix or whatever it is, and um, you need to get need out of the class. If it's before January 27th, the changes you make are transparent. They are not part of your permanent record. That's why I hold off a little bit before I start having grades. After January 27th, you're on the list, and you're going to be on the list at the end of the semester. Um, you can you can withdraw from a class. Okay, that you have to run that by me, since it's online and everybody's scattered out, and some of you never come to the campus at all. Um, you don't have to have a form. You would simply email me with a clearly worded statement expressing your desire to withdraw from the class. You don't have to explain why or anything like that. What I'll do is forward that to student services with uh, with uh, uh, indication of what your last date of participation in the class was. And they'll take it from there and the deed will be done. Okay, so um, keep track of your average and don't just uh, like go down with the ship as so too many people do. Most of the people get F's in my class. Do it by just sort of fading out. They don't participate anymore. Never hear from them again. That's not a drop. It takes a little procedure to drop. Okay, I think I've about got this done. And uh, so this will be your video introductory videos for this week. There are a number of um, instructional videos you definitely need to watch. There's uh, one, one or two. I might have got it in one. I don't really spend much time on pre-Columbian America because it's not history so much as it is archaeology. If the folks who were here when the Europeans arrived 500 and some odd years ago had had a way of recording their past, their history, doc in a documentary way that other people who came after them could read later, they could survive the ravages of time, then American history might go back for thousands of years and not just a paltry five centuries. But it doesn't. So, it could also be videos on discovery and exploration this week, so don't get behind. In my class, keeping up is a load. Trying to keep up while catching up borders on the impossible. So there you go. Happy hunting.